I was born in the Second World War. So that tells you how, how old I am. Where is that speaker that I shouldn't be on? Stay on this side a little bit, huh? I'll try. Anyway, I was born in the Second World War, and the only thing that I remember of the war was this German officer sitting at the kitchen table, eating fried potatoes out of the pan that he made my mother make for him, because that's the way they were. And I had a piece of cake in my hand, dry, and he suddenly takes it from me. And I was just about ready to start bawling when he sits open the zipper in his tunic and takes out a pound of real butter and puts it on that pit and gives it back to me. That's the only thing I remember from the war. But anyway, in that time, yes, it was hard. My father, when he basically sold the farm in 1964, we were milking only 28 cows. I was the youngest of six, and land in the Netherlands is very, very scarce. There is way too many people. I don't know how many people live here in Wyoming, but let's say it this way. It was just as many people living per square mile in Michigan, where we're from, had the United States population would be in Michigan. Yes, oh my gosh. So, you know, they live on top of each other. So land is very scarce. My oldest brother managed to get a farm. And his youngest son ended up on another farm and got sick and tired of all the rules and regulations that the government is putting on farmers now. And he moved to Australia this spring. So now, yes, I'm in the States. I have a niece in Canada. I have a you know, North nieces and nephews in the Netherlands, I have a niece in Germany, a niece in France, and a nephew in Australia. I think you travel the world when I retire. <laughs> when are you going to retire by then? <laughs> Never? Oh boy. So, yes, then in 1955, my sister moved to Canada. They wanted to farm, and like I said, there was no land in the Netherlands. And I was the youngest, and I wanted to get my parents to go to Canada and, and see it, where they were living. Well, on North America, on, on one page and an atlas, Ontario and Michigan is very close together. So I thought, hmm, if I become an exchange student to Michigan, they can come over and we can meet each other. I didn't look at the scale. <laughs> <laughs> but I ended up in Mayfield, and yes, I stayed with Diane's parents. And my father and mother did come over, and the whole family from Canada did come over to Mayville in Michigan, so everybody met everybody. And yes, we were done with the year, and I had to go back to the Netherlands. We could not come back to the States within two years. Now, from my high school, there were five exchange students. All with the, at that time, the Michigan Council of Churches, but this, which is now the Youth for Understanding. Anybody heard that? Anyway, it, it still does exchanges. So the five of us were all over Michigan, having come together a couple of times, and everybody had to go back to the Netherlands, and I went to vet school. Very first day in vet school, we were sitting with 300 people in a room built for 100. And the first thing they tell us, you want to become a veterinarian? Fine, you want to practice. Forget it. There's too many of you. Well, I've been here a year. My English was not so bad. I cannot get rid of this accent. That's why I talk with my hands. <laughs> and I took all English books, which is very hard, because the rest are the German books, which is close to God. And I started studying. And never gave up. And so, then two years in vet school, thank goodness, you know, my father and mother had been there because my father developed bone cancer. Diane and I had been writing about once a month, and he said, um, Diane, if you want to meet my father one more time, you better come over. So she said, yes. So in 64, she came over, and she was 
the one that kept the house clean, did some of the cooking. She even stuffed my dad's pipe with tobacco so he could have another smoke. <laughs> Though he couldn't talk English, they understood each other quite well. And then we said, we went our separate ways. But by the time we knew that we could depend on each other, and I think this is very important that in the relationship you can depend on each other. Love is important, but dependable, and that you depend on each other is very important. So we started writing every week in the mail. At that time, it was a lot better than that. We put a letter in the mail on Sunday night, and Wednesday morning she had it. It was always that way. So anyway, we really got serious. So we started talking about getting together and maybe getting married sometime. And uh, so in 66, I was back in Michigan. At the time, we got engaged. And everything got balletted because we didn't have the cell phone or the phone that we have now. So we started talking about what do you want? I'm colorblind. So Diane said, what, uh, what color dresses do you want for the, the bridesmaids? I said, yellow, so I can see it. <laughs> so the bridesmaids were yellow, thank goodness. 67, I was back here, we got married. And Diane had been going to college, Michigan State, was a teacher, was teaching for a year already. And we went back to the Netherlands. Now, this is when you're young, it doesn't make any difference. Diane was an only child. But we never thought about it now. That the only child now is going across the ocean. You're young, you just do it. And we spent the last, the next three years in the Netherlands, where I tried to finish college. And she ended up teaching at the Air Force Base. At that time, it was a nice Air Force Base, and she became, yeah, teacher. She was teaching summer school because I had to go to school all the time. We were a member of the Square Dance Club. And to be honest, Christian, it's amazing that I graduated because we had so much fun. There were parties every week. <laughs> the Dutch veterinarian is a rough bunch. When Diane came, she could go to a language institute and she learned Dutch in eight weeks. Now Dutch is a very hard language to learn because we have five vowels. Then the Dutch put them together and make a different sound. And Mr. Heath here, I just taught him this morning how to pronounce the name Dorbos because it's a Dutch name. My mother's on the weekends. I told Diane, don't use this word. Diane, you can't say that word. Why not? Everybody does it. Yes, but we are vet students. We are a little rough. So don't tell it at my mother's. OK. Because see, that's the thing. You know, the, the veterinarians there were the rough ones on college, really. But we had a lot of fun. And Yes, I did get through it. It was hard because, you know, microbiology, looking through the microscope at colors, didn't mean a thing to me. I just drew what the guy next to me had drawn. So I got through. <laughs> but then the practical thing came. And that's what I love. Now, many years ago, before that, the reason I wanted to become a veterinarian was because my brother, that moved in by the mile away from us had bought some pigs. Some pigs. And they were too young to have the little ones. So when he called the vet, because he couldn't get the little piglets out, he picked me up. I was 12 years old, I was tall and skinny. He said, you come with me. And he made me lay in the straw and reach into those gills up to here. Because, you know, this is what they do in the Netherlands. Not for ladies. But for guys, when you do a calving or anything, strip to the waist. Because you have an, an extra three inches, and many times that is all it takes. So anyway, I was laying behind that, and the straw cat was a little picking us out. You know what? That was fun. <laughs> cat was little screaming things out. So I come home and said to my mom, I said, I want to become a vet. Well, then you better work hard. So I did. And like I said, I got to vet school. Out of the 300, only 96 graduated. Only two of them were in private practice of my immediate friends, about a dozen and a half guys that you chum along with. Of those 18 guys, 
two were required to practice, and I'm one of them. The other one is a friend in the Netherlands, and he has retired 20 years ago. <laughs> Nervous breakdown. And, but yes, they are still friends. Not lately, we've been traveling because of COVID, but before that, you know, we go to the Netherlands every so often. When we go there, we still go there and meet him. And we were such close friends that his oldest daughter, who wanted to become a pilot and was taller than I was and blonde, beautiful, big girl, came to us and stayed with us for 11 months to go to CMU, Central Michigan University, and learn English. And yes, we are proud of her too. She was part of the crew of the first all-female crew that flew a KLM plane across the ocean. But she's already retired too. <laughs> They have been back several times, he took the first of us. So, yeah, retirement, what is it? It's a dirty word, I guess. <laughs> then, you know, we got married and we adopted our children. We have three adopted children. Charles is the youngest. And when he was three years old, he got infatuated with Star Wars. I don't know about you kids, but, you know, Star Wars, yeah, it's just a movie. Booked her, but he was just infatuated. So he was deciding that he wanted to become a movie producer. He went to see you for a while and ended up going to Miami, to the Miami Film School, graduated with high grades, and him and a couple buddies took a cross country trip from Florida to California and said, Hollywood, here we are, let's make movies. Yeah, right. <laughs> and Hollywood is not what you know, it's who you know or you have a lot of money. There also was the writer's strike, which was at the time pretty hard because the business was kind of dormant. And he started working for Sidney Powell and a couple other famous people, producers, but never got his foot in the door. So a couple of his friends, they formed a little, but supposed to be a company, and he wanted to make reality shows. So then the first thing they tried to start the reality show about the growing of marijuana. They were already <laughs> ahead of the time. <laughs> they got blindfolded, they got driven around for about half an hour, and they got out with the cameras and people said, uh uh, uh you're not filming this because this is still illegal. <laughs> so that didn't go. So when he got back, uh, he was working at Nickelodeon not really making movies, not doing any directing, just helping everywhere. But his friend was one of the higher up at Nickelodeon. And he says, you know what? We should go to my dad. He is in Michigan, it's in the middle of the United States, nothing comes from there, nobody makes movies there, and he's a character. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. <laughs> So yeah, they came, and they came with the, the three guys and the film. Modern technology still doesn't keep up with me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, they came. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so anyway, they came with the film, and they, in one week, did 28 hours of filming. Out of those 28, they made a four-minute DVD. <laughs> and with that DVD, his friend went around. He went to Animal Planet. No, we don't wonder. We already had a fetch in the pond. Discovery, same thing. Nat Geo Wild was just a new show. It just had started. And they said, yeah, it's not so bad. Now, there was one picture, and it comes propping up all the time. We imported fish and horses from the Netherlands. Now I know Wyoming is a horse state, and everybody knows what horses. But you know the Frisian horse, the big, black, beautiful, high stepping horse. Well, we still have some. Anyway, we imported those, and I love the smell of horses. 
I don't know if you do it or not, but when you get close to the nose, it smells good. And I love the smell. It's probably some grass and all that stuff that I stick the nose in, but it smells good. So they took a picture from the other side and they thought I was kissing a horse. <laughs> I don't kiss animals. I have a wife. <laughs> I don't want hair in my mouth. Besides, a ho an animal doesn't care if it gets kissed. And I found out, you know, if you want to please a cat, don't kiss it. Go hot in his fur. Because that is a simulation of an animal licking her. And you love it a lot more than a kiss, and you don't get hair in your mouth. So anyway, that picture is cropping up all the time. And that year as well says, well, you know, yeah, he's kind of funny guy kissing a horse. Why don't we try it? So they came out with the crew and they made the first four episodes. And then we had a little, little hard time explaining it to the farmers that this is not PETA. We are not making it look bad. And I think this is what I wanted to do from the very beginning, make the farmer come back into the American living room in a good light, look at it. This is how we take care of our animals. And the people now I know I'm in a farming community. <laughs> so when they realized and when they saw the first you know, couple of episodes coming through, they, they see it. And now, right now, we have no trouble filming at any farm except the Amish. I'll come to that later on. So anyway, the first one episodes were made. And we said, that's it. Nobody wants to watch this old man take his shirt off. <laughs> so, the, the, the networks have what you call it, a TCA, a Television Critics Association. This is where there's a bunch of bloggers sitting together and then they are saying something, something about the new shows that are coming on TV. Now I can walk farther away too so you guys can see me there. So anyway, we got a free trip to California. I'm a Dutchman. If it's free, I'll take it. <laughs> we were there in California in, uh, what was hotel was it? Nice big hotel. And there were a whole bunch of other networks that also had new shows, including Playboy. Never mind. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, we were just enjoying it. But the, at that time, Ned Giovanni had four new shows. There was ours, and they called it The Incredible Dr. Paul, which is not the name I would have chosen, but that's how it came out. There was The 60 Deadliest Animals, there was The Australian, The Crocodile Hunter, and Boone Smith, who was after the wild cats. Three good looking guys and this old guy. <laughs> and I thought, sitting there, what in the world are we doing here? But, you know, they asked us questions and they were asking, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But one of the funniest questions was, you guys all love animals. And if you is a vegetarian? And we look at uh-huh. <laughs> well, that was a disappointment for that lady. But we were just sitting there having a good time and coming back and thought, okay, that's it. And then all eight broke loose because it turned out that everybody liked the show. Diane and I are Christians. We go to church. I treat others like I want to be treated. For me, it's the golden rule. And for years already, people have come from far and wide with their animals. And I do the best I can to help them, and I think that's what comes out in the show. For me, a veterinarian has to treat every animal, which I do. And in one day, I castrated a three ounce rat and a 2,500 pound Belgian horse. <laughs> and thank goodness the things were not proportioned. <laughs> the rat almost was hard than a horse. 
that point, the two of us went there, and we laid him down, and I honestly sat between his hind legs and grabbed a hold of those things and pulled as hard as, as, hard as I could while my colleague put the clamp on and cut him off. But, yes, it's, it's work and it's fun. And I think this is what shows in the show that I'm having fun in what I am doing. And this is, it comes out all the time. And this is why I'm still working. For me, it is a calling, but yes, to help the animal, to help the people. And many people ask me, what's your favorite animal? The healthy animal. <laughs> Just making a difference what kind of animal it is. As long as it's healthy, I'm happy. And I have said many times, if you can't sell them a Cadillac, sell them a Ford. See what they can do for, you know, whatever you can do. And this is why so many animals come to our place that we help them. We love to help the animals. And it, I think that comes out in the show, and colleagues that were with me are basically the same thing.